Hi, it's Kim. Notes from my needle. Thanks for coming back. It's been a while since I've made one of these sit-down videos. In fact, it's been a while since I've made a video, period. I've had a lot going on with the kids finishing up school here in Canada the end of June. Um, we found out my youngest has a learning disability, so we've been trying to do things with that. Speaking with psychologists, getting the school involved, getting her on the wait list for programs to help her, finding out what sort of things that we can do at home. So most of my time has been taken up with that. I have been doing some stitching, but family comes first and she's been my main priority. But I do have some finishes and I do have some haul and some other things to share. So let's hop right in. So first we'll go with my finishes. Um, I finished my Haunted Mansion Sal by the Tiny Modernist. That's how it turned out. I'm super pleased with it. I can't wait to finish it off. I'm gonna do a soft finish and I'm gonna hang it at Halloween time. And yeah, uh, there's not really a whole lot more to say about it. I mean, I do love the piece, but that being said, I don't think I would ever do a sal ever again. <laughs> I just felt too much pressure to try to keep up with where everybody else was and I'm not a super fast stitcher and it just stressed me out when I got behind and then I put it away for a while because it was just stressing me out too much and cross stitch shouldn't stress me out it should make me that's how I relax so it should make me happy so just for my own personal sanity I'm probably not going to do a sal again but that piece is gorgeous and I love it it's great. Um, I like more cutesy Halloween as opposed to like horror Halloween. So it's going to fit right in with whatever else I have for decor. The other finish I have is the Motivational Narwhal. This is by Emma Congdon. Uh, uh, it is on an 18 count Zweigart opalescent. I stitched it with the Call for DMC. So there's DMC... There's a twall, there's light effects in there, and it is from the June 2019 issue of Cross Stitch Crazy. And I really, really love how this turned out. Um, I love stitching with the etoile. It's so soft, but it like, and it's such a subtle sparkle, and I just think it turned out gorgeous. I have a wooden plaque that I think I'm going to finish this on. I'm going to put it on some foam core. And I'm trying to find some trim that has some glitter in it or I'm gonna like maybe the plaque is just light raw wood right now I think I might stain that darker and then maybe use like some glittery paint and like paint over it but then sand some off to make it distressed I'm not quite sure yet how I'm gonna finish it but I'm hoping that something will, I don't know, come to me. I'm sorry if this video seems skewed. My tripod is a little bit broken and I'm kind of working with what I have right now and I'm hoping that it kind of goes well. Um, let's just see if I can adjust it a little bit and see if that'll work. Oh, maybe. Still kind of skewed, but uh, we'll see. We'll have to go with it, I guess. See what happens. That's a little bit better. Um, the next one I finished is actually FFO'd, and I don't have it with me because it was a gift, so it's been given away. I do have a picture of it here in my stitching journal, and it's the Always Remember. And that's how it turned out. I turned it into a soft finish. I love how it turned out, and my friend loved it also. And I purchased that by on mybobbin.com, and the designer is Anna Petunova. And that's done on 14 count Charles Craft Antique White and it's with the thread that I hand dyed myself. Yeah, and I'm super pleased with how it turned out and my friend absolutely loves it so that's all that matters. And this stitching journal has completely come in handy and I'll just give you a quick... So this is what I've been doing is I've been writing the pattern name, the designer, if it came from a magazine and then when I finish it I'm just printing out a picture on my computer and taping it in using um, double-sided tape that you would use in scrapbooking so I've done it here as well and I'm just gonna start doing that for everything I start and finish this year 
Um, the next thing I want to show you is a whip. I only have one whip. Well, I have more than one whip, but I only have one that I've been working on right now. And I started Llama Lump by Plum Street Samplers. And I decided to try my hand at one over one stitching. I've never done it before, but I'm loving how tiny this is looking. So that's the middle partial llama. Don't mind my waist knot there. And this is on 28 count uh, Zweigart Mushroom Lugana. And this is being done with the DMC conversion that is provided in the chart. And I'm really liking how it's turning out so far. Even though I think I may have to break down and buy a magnifier. Because in the daytime, in natural daylight with a lamp, it's no problem to stitch one over one on that. But if I want to stitch in the evening, I'm either going to have to work on another project or get a magnifying lamp in order to see that properly because I've been finding it really difficult to work that tiny, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And so the next thing I have is some haul. Um, I got some stuff in from Traditional Stitches. I bought this 32 count uh, Petite Point Belfast Linen. And this is for the Country Cottage Needleworks Merry Christmas, my dear. Uh, that I have in my stash and this is the called for fabric for that and I love how stinking cute this is so I'm gonna do it with the called for I did also buy some patterns um, from Michelle Garrett bendy stitchy on her D stash on Instagram on the bendy stitchy D stash so I got this Brooks books which is really cute and I also got this Canadian Santa, which I had never seen before. So I picked that up as well. Uh, my order from Traditional Stitches also came in. So I picked up the pineapple ornament that I am going to make for my son. And I also got my copy of the Coffee Quaker. And I did decide that I am going to do this with a one color of floss, but a variegated color of floss. And I'm going to order them from Hand Dyed by Rolanda on Etsy. And I'm kind of torn between two right now. One is a brown cotton and it's pretty variegated, which is what I want. And then the other one is a brown silk, which is not as variegated, but it's silk. So... I don't really know. I think I'm probably going to end up going with the cotton um, just because I want that higher contrast variegation for this piece because I don't want that because there's so many different colors in the piece. I don't want the piece to end up looking flat because I decided to go with something that was more subtly variegated as opposed to something that was more heavily variegated, if that makes sense. I still haven't decided what kind of fabric I'm going to use. Um, the called for in here is, I think it's Stars Hollow. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's a r, r 40 count Stars Hollow. And it's stitched one over two. I don't know if I want to do 40 count because I don't, I think that's going to be very hard on my eyeballs. And I don't know if I want to do like a creamy colored background. I don't know if I'm going to do it all one color variegated. I'm wondering if maybe I should pick a different color fabric for the background to kind of make that pop a little bit more. But I, I'm not 100% decided on that either. I have a couple of things in my stash, but I don't really know. I did also pick up my unicorn pattern. I have been looking for this for, I want to say the better part of a year and got it through uh, one of the cross stitch groups I'm in on Facebook and it's the Stitchy Kitty Snowman Trio. I love this. Uh, when I do stitch these I think I'm gonna leave the border and the little names off because that part doesn't appeal to me but the snowmans with their long hats appeal to me um, and I think I might stitch them I'm not sure. I've I was thinking about stitching them entirely in a toile. But then somebody mentioned to me that 
the white etoile is it doesn't really come across as white it comes across more as like a light 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 gray like it's a kind of a antique tone like not a bright white so I'll have to do a floss toss and check it I mean I could potentially stitch it with light effects but I don't know that I really want to do that because light effects can be for lack of a better word a pain in the butt to work with so I don't know I'm still thinking I don't know if I'll get to this this year or not because I do have quite a few ornaments that I want to stitch for my tree um, so I don't know if I'll have time for another bigger piece because I would also like to finish my six fat men as well so I guess we'll see how that goes because I don't really have a whole lot of Halloween stitching this year I don't I don't have any plans to do any Halloween stitching although I do really like um, the spooky apothecary I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly from hands-on design the triangle banner shape ones those are really cute so I might get a couple of those to put around for Halloween but we'll see how my plans go because I do still have some larger whips that I would like to finish uh, I have my Canadian Beauty by Joan Elliott to finish I still have my magical batter butterfly that needs the beading finished and I still have the magical unicorn that needs to be finished as well. Um, I do have a couple of Joan Elliott's in my stash that I'd also like to get done at some point, but I mean, I wish I had more time, but I really don't. I did also pick up two prairie schoolers. Um, I saw these and I thought they would be perfect for my mother and father-in-law as ornaments for Christmas. Uh, my mother-in-law is a knitter, so I thought that would be perfect. And this is the uh, 2007 Santa and my father-in-law loves hockey and this is the 2009 Santa so I thought that would be perfect for him and I'm wondering I might stitch these I still have some of that opalescent Ada left so I might stitch these over one on the opalescent Ada or like one over two I mean like one strand over too, because that Ada is small enough I believe I think it's either a 16 or an 18 count I can't remember but that's my plan for that I did also pick up some fabric this is a 32 count even weave um, it's more of a lavender color than it's coming up there it's kind of coming up gray on the camera but it's a, more of a lavender so I got a 14 by 18 piece of that I picked up a nine and a half by ten piece of this mystery even weave I'm not sure what count that is and it's more of a pale it's coming off kind of yellow there but it's more of a cream uh, I have some more purple this is 28 count and it's a nine by 13 nine by 13 piece and then I got this pink Dahlia even weave and it's 13.5 by 17 28 count and it's definitely more pink than it's coming off there it's coming off more orange there from what I can see in the viewfinder anyway um, but yeah I really like this and I'm almost considering doing coffee Quaker on this with the brown what, what are your thoughts brown and pink I don't know I'd have to do a floss toss maybe once I get the flosses um, I did also pick up some fabric for finishing um, this is what I chose to finish the haunted mansion Sal let's open that up a little bit that's really cute right so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a fussy cut where so I can get more of one of these a couple of these bats in on the border and I might fussy cut a couple of the bats out completely and maybe stiffen them and put them on as an applique maybe um, but I am gonna do this as a soft finish so I did get quite a large piece of the fabric so that I have enough to do the entire thing and I mean these these glitter bats I I had to and it was it really kind of goes well with all of the colors in there so that was good and then I just I saw these sloths and they had to come home with me 
and that's pink background it is coming it's a little bit washed out there and I'm not sure quite yet what I'm gonna do with this maybe a project bag I don't know um, and I saw these rainbow dots and I had to have those as well I just love love them it reminds me of um, those dot paintings or the dot mandalas that are really popular right now um, so I really really like this too and I worked on a quilt top. I made a strip quilt using some batiks. I'm not gonna fold the whole thing out because it's really large, but there's a sample of what it looks like. It does need a border and to be bound and backed. And I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do a single border or if I'm going to do a double border because I think what I might do is do a fatter border like a four inch border and then I still have some of these fabrics left that I thought I would make a pieced border to go over on that and then another four inch border but I'm not entirely certain if I want to put that much work into it or if I just want to put the one border on it and call it a day I haven't decided yet um that's all I have for whips and haul and stuff like that I did want to do just a fun little thing. Um, there's my good morning pouch. I am using it as a notions bag. And I just wanted to show you some of my can't live without items that I keep in my notions bag. And maybe you guys have can't live without items that you keep in yours as well. Um, I currently have in there uh, one of the Dritz needle holders with the magnet in the end. And it's currently loaded with some size 28 John James Petites. Um, those are my favorite needles. I just, I just like that they make using thread more economical because I can get more stitches in because of how small the needle is. I can go until my thread is shorter, which is nice. Um, the other thing I keep in there is this little seam ripper in case I need to frog. Um, I do love the ones that have the little nub thing on the end because then I can just kind of, instead of trying to pull out these tiny pieces of floss, I can just use this to wipe across the fabric and it picks those up. So that's handy dandy for my little notions bag. I also have some beeswax thread conditioner for when I'm working with my metallics and that stays in my notion bag. I have a pair of stork scissors, always. Um, I do want to get a couple of fobs or make some fobs for my scissors and I would also like to make myself a scissor holder or a scissor frog. I did see a really nice one that was made out of some wooden embroidery hoops and two like bases that would be for maybe some sort of candlestick or something where they turned it into a frog and stained it and it was really beautiful. Uh, and the last thing I have in there is my star detailer. And now that I know how to use this thing, it's been indispensable. Um, I do also have a snag nabbit in there, um, but it's in with an, well, normally it's in here, but it's in with another project right now. So I keep that in there. And I do have some, <coughs> excuse me, some bobbin peels they're called. They're these little silicone things that are meant to go around a bobbin for a sewing machine and keep the thread from unwinding when you're storing it. But um, I got the idea from Leslie over at Fat Cat Flossing and she uses them to hold uh, the fabric when she's stitching in hand. So it's the perfect size to crimp on fabric and it doesn't gum up your fabric or leave marks or anything like that. So that's really cool. So yeah, that's what's in my notions bag. That's what I stick in with my projects. And yeah, if you have any can't live without items that you keep in your notion bag that I don't have in mind, feel free to share them because I'd love to hear what other people use that might be helpful for my stitching as well. Um, the other thing I have is my plans. So right now through my Nova Scotia cross stitching group here in Canada, we're doing Jolly July where we're working on basically Christmas in July and we're working on ornaments or bigger pieces. And so my plans so far for Jolly July are to finish my Mill Hill ornament that just needs the beading. Um, also to start and potentially finish those two 
um, Prairie Schooler Santas and I plan to start one of those today and I would also probably like to work some more on my six fat men and get some more of that finished or I might just kind of keep it as ornaments for Jolly July and maybe pull one or two out of my um, just cross stitch ornaments issue that I showed a couple videos ago and pull some of the snowmen out of there and get that done so I haven't really decided yet I am set on working on the Mill Hill and the two um, prayer schoolers but as far as adding anything else in I haven't really decided yet anyway that is all I have for you this time around um, I'm hoping to not leave it go for two months before I have another one of these sit down videos. Um, I might start doing what um, uh, other people do where they do kind of a little daily blip and then merge all the pieces together um, and do it over a two week period and then I kind of have a video ready to go. I don't know if that style would work better than sitting down. I feel like it might because I feel like I forget things when I leave it go so long and even though I do have notes. Anyway, I might try that next time. And until next time, happy stitching. I hope you're all having a great day. To all my Canadians, uh, happy Canada Day yesterday. I hope everybody had a great long weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.